Good evening. This is His Love for Us. I'm coming back to you today. We're going to talk about, continue to talk about Gog and Magog. And this was coming out of Ezekiel 38. We have talked about it, verses 1 through 3 um, previously. But now we're going to talk about Ezekiel 38, verses 4 through 6. So you can see I'm taking three um, scriptures um, at a time because, uh, you know, when you're dealing with prophetic things and prophecy, there's a lot of symbolism and it's a lot to unpack and just, even if you read just one scripture. So I just want to talk about that. Now, before we get into this video and the study of Ezekiel 38, I'm going to start to read Ezekiel 38, 4 through 6. And it reads, I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all its troops, the house of Togarma from the far north and all its troops, many people are with you. This attack takes place at a time when Israel is living in a time of safety, peace, and unsuspecting of what is really going on. The military attack will be comprised of armies of six nations of Ezekiel's day. Five nations are named by God in Ezekiel 38 verses 5 through 6. So we will talk about that. Okay, it says in verse 5, the first nation was Persia. Persia is Iran. But modern day Persia is the nation of Iran. Some 2,500 years ago, through this prophecy, God was saying that in the end times, Iran would be sending military forces against Israel in the Middle East. So all of these places, before I go any further, all these places that are surrounding Israel, you know how big Israel is. It's not really that big. It's not that big. So all of these nations surrounding her are going to, attack her in the end times and you know the word of God you know Israel is dear to his heart so if they try it God got something for them you best believe it so the nation known as Ethiopia in Ezekiel's day is the nation that we know today as Cush or Sudan uh, Sudan right now again, is dominated and ruled by a radical Muslim government that hates Israel with a passion and wants to see it destroyed. So as you all know, they have been fighting for the land of Israel since the beginning of time. This goes way, way back to the biblical times when God promised Abraham, you know, he promised this is your seed, this land, everything he promised them. That this belongs to them, you know, to the Israelites. And so, anyway, it, they've been fighting about this land all these years. It's been, a, it's been a battle for this land. And, you know, God gave them the land. And it's not for them to split the land, as you hear in the news. It's not for them to split the land. It belongs to them. And so, as we hear in the news today... It's always a little war. And you hear, you know, Israel, the IDF and all them bombing and carrying on over there, you know, because they keep, it's just a lot of tensions there. And you'll probably hear more because you can even download. I would suggest if you want to keep up with the Israel news, there is an app on, you know, in your Google Play Store. It's called Israel News. They do have the, the Jerusalem Post. Um, but that one, um, you have to pay a subscription, but, um, the Israel news, 
they do have some of Jerusalem Post um, articles in it. Plus, it's a free app, so you don't have to pay a subscription. So I will keep my eye, you know, on Israel because everything, a lot of things are centered around Israel prophetically. And we have to know, you know, because Jesus is coming, y'all. Whether you like it or not, Jesus is coming and he has shown us in his word, you know, what's going to take place, what's going to come to pass. And things are coming to pass even as we speak. So I'm going to continue. The third nation named in verse 5 is Libya. Libya is located um, due west of Egypt in North Africa. The fourth nation named in verse 6 was Gomer. It is known as Turkey. Now, sometimes, y'all, when I go on these maps and I go to study and st- and I'm I'm trying to make sure I get these locations correct because certain people have the maps different, and I'm looking and reading the scripture and you know, as far as the territory of where these places are located. But like I said to you in the beginning of this video, just make sure that you read for yourself, get some understanding for yourself, okay. All right. So, yes. So it says, and then the fifth nation name, verse six, was the house of Togarma, the eastern part of what you and I know today is the nation of Turkey. Now, we're going to talk about what a hook is. So you can see in this picture, it looks kind of like a fish hook. So I tried to find something to give you a little visionary of what um the Lord is talking about when he was gonna put hooks in their jaws. So a hook hook is a piece of metal or other material curved or bent back at an angle for catching hold of or hanging things on. A thing designed to catch people's attention. So you know during that time when that happens, oh it's going to catch their attention attention. Because the Lord is going to, you think you're going to go over there and fight with the Israelites. You think so. You think you're going to make war. But he's got something for them. Okay. So right here, there's a horse in this picture. I just want you to know, um, as far as the bridle um, was mentioned in scripture, the bridle is, see this headgear that's on the horse? That's what a bridle is. It's used to control the direction the horse is supposed to be going into. So um, the bridle is the headgear used to control a horse consisted, consisting of buckled straps to which a bit and reins are attached. The word bridle comes from the old English bridle meaning rein, R-E-I-N curb restraint which is precisely what the purpose of a bridle is is to help restrain a horse's movements when necessary so the lord is going to restrain their movements they you know they think they're going to head for it but he's not going to allow them to he's not going to allow he's going to, he has control god is in control of everything and his word has to come to pass it's written in the Holy Scriptures. You know, his re- word cannot return void. He has, it has to come. And it's, it seems, you know, as we hear and we listen to all that's going on in the world and we are noticing and, you know, that prophecy is coming to pass. And sometimes it makes you like, you know, a little fearful. But at the same time, we ought to be having joy because we know our redemption is drawing nigh. So, you know, yes, it seems scary, but God said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So we should not fear like the world fears. Um, But just, you know, I would just pray and ask God to, you know, just to keep you at peace and keep you calm during these times. And he will. He will. Okay, so I found this little key maybe to help you bring some understanding because, Back in the biblical times, the names were different. It would have been nice had the names stayed what they were back then. But 
they had ancient biblical names to the countries um, back then. But today, a lot of them have changed. So you can have an understanding, like when you read your Bible and you read about a specific country in the Bible, then you know, okay, you know, God is talking about Iran or, you know, he's talking about um, Iraq. You know, it's different, different ones. Um, they have different old ancient names. So I'm going to just go through this list. It says the Ezekiel 38, 1 through 6 invaders. These are the ones that are going to invade Israel during the time of Antichrist. So the first one says Magog, which is the southern steppes of Russia. The southern steppes of Russia. Rosh is Russia. Meshach and Tubal are Turkey. And then it has Turkmen. I can't even say these words. Turkmenistan. Okay. So, yes, because, like, when I was looking that up, I was like, it's, it's, it's confusing. And it might be two different places within Turkey, you know. Uh, that, that's why it says Meshach and Tubal. It, it represents Turkey. Like, there might be a, nor a northern part of Turkey or a southern part of Turkey. Okay, so then you have Persia, which is Iran. And you know Iran, uh, they want to obliterate everything and everybody. They have all types of nuclear weapons and things. And I know you've heard about this in the news as well. The next one is Ethiopia, Sudan, and Somalia, which was kind of in the same with put to, because um, they're right in the same, you know, area next to each other. Libya. Libya may include Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia. Libya is located due west of Egypt in north, north, northern Africa. So that makes about sense. Okay. Gomer, which is the north central Turkey. And to Tagarma is eastern Turkey. So you got north central Turkey, which is Gomer. You have eastern Turkey, which is Tagarma. And then you have Mesech and Tubal, which are Turkey as well. So there's a couple, you know, of these countries within, you know, these places within Turkey that are part of the invaders of Israel. So as we continue... I'm going to talk about Magog. Magog, according to the first century Jewish historian Josephus, the land of Magog was inhabited by the Scythians. The Scythians lived throughout Central Asia, indicating its identity is associated with nations today, such as, now y'all, I'm not good at these words, but I'm going to try, is Kat, okay, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzia, Uzbekistan, and Turkmen, Lord, I can't do it, Turkmenistan, and Tajikistan. If y'all are listening from them countries, please forgive me, but I'll do the best I can. Some also include Afghanistan in this group. So as you look on this map, Magog is off to the right-hand side. It looks like a beige, brown little area. Off, not too. It's right below Rosh, which is Russia in the red. But that's Magog. So the next one we're going to talk about is Rosh. Rosh is the remote part of the north. Because of this, most interpreters identify Magog as Russia at least part of Russia, or perhaps Russia and some of the former Soviet nations connected with it. So, Rosh, which is Russia, is in the red. Okay. Now, as far as Meshach, or me, they have it spelled M-E-S-H-E-K, or M-E-S-H-E-C-H. Meshach, Meshach, Meshach. And Tubal. 
noted together in this passage, this area is located in part of modern day Turkey. The next one is Persia. This is the land of modern Iran. Persia, Persia is that purple one in the middle, right in that little small area. That is modern day Iran. Kush or Ethiopia, this land often translated as Ethiopia is not the same as modern Ethiopia. It represented the, the land south of Egypt. Today, this nation is Sudan. So you see Ethiopia down here in the pink. That's where Ethiopia is. Okay. Now, put also translated in some versions as Libya. This land is still known as Libya today. And put is the area with the mustard yellow, the yellow area. That's where Libya is. And I was looking for Togarma for Turkey. And that area, that um, teal green area, that is Turkey right there. I just couldn't see it because they got it all covered up. Um, so, yes, that is Turkey. Now, it says, okay, um, Beth to Garma, which is part of modern day Turkey. As we read, it was it says, I will turn you around and put hooks into your jaws and lead you out. This means that God will put hooks in their jaws and turn them about the way he wants them to go. God put a hook in the nose and a bridle in the lips of the king of Assyria and brought him back from Jerusalem. Isaiah 37 verses 21 through 29 reads, it says, then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah saying, thus says the Lord God of Israel, because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib king of Assyria, this is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised you, laughed you to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head behind your back. Whom have you reproached and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your servants you have reproached the Lord. And said, by the multitude of my chariots, I have come up to the height of the mountains, to the limits of Lebanon. I will cut down its tall cedars and its choice cypress trees. I will enter its farthest height to its fruitful forests. I have dug and drunk water, and with the soles of my feet I have dried up all the brooks of, of defense. Did you not hear long ago how I made it from ancient times that I formed it? Now I have brought it to pass that you should be for crushing fortified cities into heaps of ruins. Therefore, the inhabitants had little power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field and the green herb as the grass on the housetops and grain blighted before it is grown. But I know your dwelling place. You're going out and you're coming in, and your rage against me. Because your rage against me and your tumult have come up to my ears. Therefore, I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back. By the way which you came. Okay? The Lord is not playing. So, you know, he hears. You think he don't hear you? He don't see you doing this and doing that? Oh, he hears and he sees. And even in the Bible, says his, the eye, his eyes go to and fro, to and fro. He's watching. And he's going to have the last say so. And he will turn their direction. And they have no fight when it comes to God. When he's... Brings his judgment, 
he brings it. Okay, so turn into your Bibles to Ezekiel 30, verse 5. I just want to show you when the Lord, you know, is talking about how all these uh, countries are going to come up against Israel. So Ezekiel 30, verse 5 reads, Ethiopia, Libya, Lydia, all the mingled people, Chub, and the men of the lands who are allied shall fall with them by the sword. So they join in the gang, the gang, but they're going to all, they're going to feel it. They're going to all fall by the sword. God is not playing no games. I wanted to expound on what we've been, I've been sharing. Um, I use like Matthew Henry's concise commentary when I need an in-depth understanding or I just want to learn more about what the scripture is talking about. But I'm going to read what Matthew Henry um, concise commentary says about Ezekiel 38 verses 1 through 13. It says, these events will be in the latter days. It is supposed these enemies will come together to invade the land of Judea. So the ancient name of Israel is Judea, which is J-U-D-E-A. And God will defeat them. God not only sees who are now the enemies of his church, but he foresees who will be so and lets them know by his word that he is against them. Though they join together, the wicked shall not be unpunished. That ties up with um, the rest of this lesson for today. So as you look on here on this map, it shows you you have the Antichrist it's only when this is going to happen. All this stuff is when Antichrist is going to be on the scene. So you have the Antichrist. You have Armageddon. You know, that's where the battle's going to take place. Then you have the kings of the north, the kings from the east, and then the kings of the south. And all those places we were talking about, Iran, which we know, which is Persia over here. And um, we have Rosh, which is Russia, and so on and so on. So you see what that looks like, a little explosion in the middle with the little pink thing? That's Israel. Can you imagine? All these nations are surrounding Israel. Yet Israel may be small, but Israel is mighty. And, you know, God loves Israel, and he has his eye on Israel. Israel, um, the people there, you know, God is watching over his people and we are all his, all his people, but just keep your eye on, you know, things that's going on over there. Um, as we look for the return of our blessed savior, Jesus Christ. Every time I look up at the sky, I say, Lord, are you coming today? But nobody knows the hour for which the Lord returns. But just make sure make sure that you make your election sure because time is running out, guys. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Make him king, Lord and Savior over your life. He stands at the door and he knocks. He's asking. He's wanting to have relationship with you. So he loves us so much and he died on the cross for our sins. He paid the penalty of sin and death on the cross. And he was nailed to the cross. They put a crown of thorns around his head because they were mocking him. Calling him, he's the king of the Jews. Well, he is the king. You know? He paid the penalty. He had nails nailed into his hands and his feet. Pierced on his side where water and blood flushed out of his system. He carried that cross in all that pain and agony for you and us, you and I. Give your heart to him today. He stands there and asks him to come into your heart and repent of your sins and believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I pray that this lesson um, blessed you if you have any comments, please, let's have a discussion. Let's talk about it. That's how we help each other. That's how we build each other up. It's been a pleasure um, teaching you today. 
and I will be back. I won't be back as long as I have, but just, just bear with me. I will be back. I, I pray that you all have a blessed and rest of the week. Thank you for coming. And thank you for listening. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.